When I made Afro's Curiosities, I really wanted to revisit games from my past to show you guys what my childhood was like. One aspect of my childhood I love showing to you folks are the demo discs I collected from the early 2000s. I have yet another demo disc for the PlayStation 1, the Euro Demo Disc 105 from the official PlayStation Magazine UK. Released in December 2003, this was the final demo disc I got when it was new. The magazine then ended a few months later and it was a sad time knowing I could never get these discs anymore. Two years of barely missing a demo disc finally came to a crashing halt. So was this demo disc worth it? Let's check out the included games and find out. First up, it's 40 Wings. This 3D platform game came out in 1999 and as a kid I used to love playing this. Anyway, you take control of this kid who is in his sleeping attire and suddenly the nightlife wants to end you. Zombies and other enemies want to say hello and then, well, end you. Time to save the world? This 3D platform game mostly has you exploring the environment, looking for key items and opening these doors. I didn't get too far as I got stuck and ended up lost, but in that time I got a decent feel for the game. The controls aren't the best, they feel heavy and turning is sluggish. When you try to attack you almost always take a hit first which is very annoying. I really wasn't having much fun here. The graphics though are incredible. This is 3D done right and the cartoony style really has character and appeal. I can't deny this is a great game to look at. It reminds me of the Spyro games in terms of graphical fidelity. The sound is okay, nothing special and the music, although creepy, repeats too much and gets old pretty quickly. Overall, there is potential in this game and maybe the full version is much better. Let me know if this is worth picking up for my own collection. Next, it's Bomberman World. This game is pretty cool. There's one stage to play and simply put, you have to bomb everyone until you are the last one standing. You place bombs, get power-ups and find new creative ways to end your foes' lives. There's a time limit to contend with and if it hits one minute, the stage suddenly cages you in with these square tiles. Yes, a good way to get you more into the action. This is a simple game and it's pretty fun. As you see here, I'm useless at it and I always bomb myself, but this is a game I can get behind. The graphics are nothing special and the sound effects do get tiresome after a long play session, but it's fine. There's no music, which would have helped elevate the action a bit. Overall, this is a good playing game with lots of potential and I certainly would like to own this game someday. Buster Groove is next, and damn it, I love this game! I own the full game now, but until 2019, I could only play this game on the demo disc. Yes, I know about emulation, but in 2003, I was too young to know anything about that. So, Buster Groove is a rhythm and dance game. The aim of the game is to dance like a badass and look flashy doing so. This demo lets you play as either Heat or Pinky. Heat was always my favourite. Look at him go! The game is pretty simple. You have to press buttons within the time to the beat. A HUD element flashes with every beat and every fourth beat you need to hit the corresponding buttons. Continue succeeding and eventually you open up new combo trees and get more popular. If you finish with a 4 bar popularity you'll enable fever time in which we see the dancer breakdance. To me, this is worth it, every single time. No kidding, I love these. I must mention you can also attack and dodge incoming attacks too. The game looks great with the motion captured animation taking centre stage. You won't have time to admire this element though as you will have to pay attention to the gameplay. The music though, just listen. Yep, getting the full version was worth it. I love this game. Yeah. 
Now, it's Core Borders 4. The fourth Core Borders game in the series had a lot to live up to since I loved the second game. If you want to see my take on Core Borders 2, check the video description. As for Core Borders 4, it's a snowboarding game and this demo takes place in Vermont. You race downhill with other riders trying to get points while looking cool doing it. Obviously, I pulled off all my moves with style and grace. <laughs> well. So, is this game any good? Hmm, that's a tough question. Compared to Core Borders 2, this game is much better to control and pulling off moves here is actually fairly simple. The course designs are much improved and there's lots of smooth looking hills and gradients compared to the second game. You can also punch people now which I simply don't understand. Is this a snowboarding game or snow rash? As for the graphics, yes, the graphics are very low resolution, but they are well detailed at the same time. Everything is more polished looking now and less blocky than Core Borders 2. Two years can really make a big difference. The game's soundtrack is stock sounding, but I still enjoyed it. I do miss the techno soundtrack from Core Borders 2. The soundtrack helped give it personality and that 90s vibe that I love so much. Overall, this seems like a decent game and if I can find it, I'll pick it up. Whoa, hold the phone! I found Call Borders 4 and I'm now a proud owner of the full version. I'll make a future video on it and give my proper verdict on whether I think it's any good or not. Now, we have Crash Bash. This is a party game featuring Crash and this thing. There are too many games to pick from. Polar Panic and Pogo Painter. In Polar Panic, you are on these bears or something and you have to knock the other characters off the stage. You simply charge into them to push them towards the edge and then... You can recover if you end up on the edge and there's power-ups to aid you on your road to victory. The game mode is fun, the music is pretty neat to listen to and listen to this noise. Yes, you will hear that a lot. Pogo Painter is the other game to play. This one sees you on a pogo stick colouring the tiles in your colour. The more tiles you colour before hitting these purple boxes, the more points you get. Have the most points at the end and you win! This mode is not as fun, but the music is definitely better and it can get frenetic towards the end of each round. Again, there's power-ups to assist you should you feel the need to use them. Crash Bash may not be amazing, but it's not bad and it's worth checking out if you ask me, especially for a good price. Let's now look at Treasure Planet. The movie was great, but bombed at the box office. Will this game salvage the underrated movie? Mm, about that. Treasure Planet is a basic 3D platform game with elements of other games such as light gun games. The aim of the game is to open up new areas and to move along in the level while assisting other characters to get more of the space token things to do something. I guess in the full game we would need these to progress. The game is as simple as they come and to be honest I was bored stiff! I mean I played this game for way longer than I really wanted to. The game is just so dull and uninteresting. The platforming is boring, the level design is boring, the exploring is boring. Did I mention this game is boring? God, it's one thing to have a game that works, and I know this game is made with children in mind, but this is really bordering on torture. Kids will find this boring too, I bet. Everything else about this game is meh. The controls work, but aren't the best. The graphics look alright, and the voice acting is definitely the best part of this game. If you jump on, you'll slide along wherever it takes you. However, make one wrong move. This guy especially really, really loved his job. Now, Jim, barrels are designed to resist damage from being bumped about, so... The music gets annoying fast, though. It repeats way too much, and I think it's way too whimsical for its own good. If you couldn't guess by now, this game didn't really impress me. If the full version is the same as this, I don't recommend it at all.
Dragon Veiler is next, and this is a special preview version apparently. Oh, exciting! This is an action RPG game where you play as this guy. His name is Clovis. That's all I know. You start trying to navigate this lava pit of death while also putting out these platforms that are on fire. There's a few items to collect such as health and magic upgrades and health refills. Then there's these Val items which I assume are some kind of currency. At the end you jump into this hole and HOLY SHIT A DRAGON! FIGHT IT! FIGHT IT! DOG! Okay I was over dramatic there. The bosses here are apparently dragons and to be fair there's a decent variety of attacks to pull off with your sword attacks. The magic attacks are the best though, they do massive damage and the ice spell in particular seems to work well on this dragon. The dragon is called Rage by the way. After this fight the demo ends. The graphics are okay and the music is pretty decent. I like how it changes when you fight the dragon. This seems like a decent game, but seeing how not many people talk about it, I have a feeling it's expensive. Still, maybe I'll pick it up one day. Pandemonium 2 was one of my favourite demo games growing up. This 2.5D game is pretty cool. You can pick either Nikki or Fargus. I chose Nikki as she can double jump and this makes platforming much easier. As you can see the game is pretty unique. The camera changes and tracks the character as you move forward. The camera also loves to remind you of the 3D graphics and I like how the angles show off the dangers you face as you play. As Nikki you can not attack but you can use power ups to aid you and get rid of those in your way. I have no idea what these coins do but I can't help collecting them. They make a satisfying noise when you pick them up. It turns out if you pick up a certain amount of coins you get an extra life. Neat! This is not an easy game. Aside from not having a natural attack besides jumping on your enemies you can only take 3 hits and your lives are limited. Trying to jump on enemies can be tricky and I lost a lot of health sometimes trying to time it right. The camera can also make seeing a head tough and I took a lot of cheap hits trying to progress forward. The one thing that keeps me coming back to this game though is the soundtrack. Just listen to it, I love it. It really sets the scene, mood and it's just fun to have in the background. Whoever composed this song, thank you. This is a decent platforming game with a quirky style and I for one approve. If I can find this game, I'll certainly pick it up. Street Fighter EX2 Plus was the first Street Fighter game I ever played. You can choose from Ryu or Saga and fight 2 to 3 rounds. This is a 2D, 3D fighting game. You can pull off many combos, special moves and activate the EX mode which makes you faster and able to pull off your ultimate move. This is a decent fighting game but to me it's a bit slow and it just isn't as good as the 2D Street Fighter games. It works fine, it's just the game isn't as great as it perhaps should have been. Mind you, the game looks good and the soundtrack. My god, it's absolutely amazing. As a kid I only played this so much just so I could listen to it. I would drag out the fights on purpose so that I could hear it as much as possible. <laughs> I want the full game just so I can listen to the whole soundtrack and maybe save it on my iPod for my own listening experience. Overall this is a decent game but it's not the best Street Fighter game ever. If you can look past that fact this is worth a consideration for your collection. I bet this game is pricey though knowing my luck. Hadouken! Hadouken! 
And the last game on this demo disc is Toy Story 2. I loved the movie this tie-in game was based on. Even in 2003, Toy Story 2 was all the rage and this game helped cement that. Actually, this was a time when Disney movie tie-in games were very good and helped players dive into the world the movie set for us to ponder and explore. Toy Story 2 gives you all of level 1 to explore, Andy's house. This level is the biggest on the demo and will take time to finish. There's a few different tasks for you to do. From defeating this robot boss, to helping out Piggy Banks and I forgot her name. Can you? Anyway, you will need to collect pizza tokens which will unlock more levels in the full game. Get them all and, well, nothing, of course nothing. It's a demo after all. On a more positive note, this is a fun and charming platforming game. Everything feels well made and the game can get hard at times. But as Buzz Lightyear, you can fire your laser gun, spin and double jump. You can also fall great heights and take no damage. I love the noise he makes as he falls. Yes, I'm sad, I know. The game definitely looks like the movie and exploring all of Andy's house is a joy. Now I get to see what his kitchen and basement looks like. How am I beating an IC car? Anyway, this demo is great fun. Great music and level design round out a fairly impressive game. Toy Story on the PS1 is definitely worth buying. Well folks, there you have it. Another demo disc for the PS1. It's sad that this one was my final demo disc for the system. By this point, I collected over 20 demo discs and thanks to my persistence, I was able to try out games I wouldn't have otherwise seen. This kept me looking for PS1 games I enjoyed on these demo discs until 2005 when I only bought PS2 and Game Boy Advance games for the next 8 years. These discs aren't just for nostalgic fluff. They're a gateway to a world of possibilities and new ways to have fun on a gaming system. So, let me know what you thought of this demo disc and until my next video, I will see you soon.